While he was on his usual shift patrolling a local shopping mall, Officer Daniels found something that made his heart sink. In the parking lot was a small girl, just three years old, waiting alone. No one had yet come to her aid, so he approached her to ask why she was there all alone. The girl looked up at the police officer and said something that sent a chill down his spine. Through tears, she told him, My mommy doesn't want me anymore. Agent Daniels' eyes widened when he heard what the girl said. No, this can't be right. She was too young to have been kicked out of the house. What kind of parents would do something like that? It could just have been some misunderstanding. The girl probably had no idea what she was saying. Her parents had to be somewhere around here. Agent Daniels decided to keep the girl and keep her safe until her parents found her. They were probably very worried and were looking for her everywhere. My name is Jason. What is your name? He asked the girl, hoping to get some information out of her if he gained her trust. Ella, she replied shyly. Wow, what a beautiful name, Jason said, and a smile appeared on the girl's face. Ella, let's go find your parents. Do you know where they are? He asked and the smile immediately disappeared from her face. No, mommy doesn't want me, she said again, and Jason raised an eyebrow in confusion. He didn't want to upset Ella further, but he was getting slightly worried. What if she was really here alone? However, he quickly shook his head and told himself that this couldn't be what was happening. Her parents were somewhere around here, and he was determined to find them. Let's go for a walk, okay? He held out his hand for Ella to take, and together they entered the shopping center. He took her to the control room and explained the situation to the intelligence officer she was on duty. The employee announced that Ella was lost and asked her parents to go to the information center immediately. Don't worry, they're definitely coming soon. Upon hearing this, Ella's face fell and she repeated again, No, mommy doesn't want me. Jason and the information agent exchanged worried looks, not knowing what to do. They decided to wait a little longer and the employee repeated the announcement once again. However, no one showed up. Furthermore, the security cameras only showed empty corridors. The shopping center was about to close. Ella, let's play a game, Jason suggested to her. The first one to see a yellow car wins. The girl's eyes lit up, and she nodded, letting out a small laugh. This was the perfect way to get her back to the parking lot without having to mention her parents again, Jason thought. It seemed to annoy her, every time they did that. Jason thanked the information officer and he and Ella left again. There were even fewer cars in the parking lot than before, as all the shopping center visitors had gone home and, to Ella's disappointment, none of them were yellow. Jason was also disillusioned, but for a different reason. He couldn't believe that no one had come looking for this girl. He glanced at Ella, who was still looking around, trying to spot a yellow car, and thought about what he should do. I didn't want to disturb her by asking more questions about her family or her home, but I couldn't leave her there. In the end, he decided to take her with him to the police station. There, I would think of a plan. It looks like there aren't any yellow cars here. Do you want to come with me and look somewhere else? He asked her, and Ella nodded. Now that Jason looked closer at her, he noticed some strange things. Her hair was a mess, disheveled and knotted and her clothes and hands were dirty too. He had no idea what was going on, but one thing was certain. There was something strange about this whole situation. Fortunately, he managed to distract Ella, and she seemed to have fun counting all the yellow cars they passed on the way to the station. When they got there, one of Jason's colleagues, Michelle, was already waiting for them outside. Jason didn't have children, but Michelle did, and he thought Ella would feel more comfortable with a woman too. Michelle also had some of her daughter's stuffed animals in her office, and as soon as Ella found out about them, she was very excited to see them. So Michelle took care of Ella while Jason tried to find his parents. He really needed to find them. He checked all the databases and looked at all the missing persons reports, but he found nothing useful. He realized that this was going to be more difficult than he expected but he was determined to find this girl's parents. Jason was already thinking about a plan of action when Michelle approached his desk with a worried look. Have you discovered anything yet? She asked, but Jason shook his head. She let out a deep sigh as she looked at him and told him that Ella seriously needed help. I think she's been living on the street for a while now. It doesn't tell me anything about her parents except that they don't want her at home. Something is wrong. Jason's eyes widened at this and he felt anger slowly boiling inside him. How could someone kick out such a sweet little girl and leave her alone in the cold, dark streets? 
He thanked Michelle and asked her to spend some more time with Ella. Maybe she would eventually open up. However, he would continue his own search. In the dimly lit security room, Officer Jason Daniels examined the images the mall employee had shared with them. The screen flickered as he saw an indescribable car enter the frame, stopping in the parking lot. It was here that the girl, Ella, was left alone. The car's presence felt ominous, a silent prelude to the mystery unfolding before him. Jason wrote down the car's registration number, a potential clue in this intriguing case. With determination, he entered the numbers into the database. The screen blinked, then displayed a discouraging message. No match found. The car, like a ghost, left no trace in the system, deepening the mystery surrounding Ella's arrival. Perplexed, Jason sat back in his chair, rubbing his temples. The car's connection to Ella was undeniable, but its origins remained shrouded in secrecy. What was your role in this situation? Was it a simple passerby, or did he have the key to understanding why Ella had been left in that cold and desolate parking lot? Jason stood up from his desk with determination. It was clear that conventional methods would not be enough. He needed to dive deeper, follow the few clues he had. With new determination, Jason decided to expand his search beyond screens and databases into the real world where Ella's story began. Returning to the footage, Jason squinted, looking for any forgotten details. As the grainy images played back, he looked for anomalies, signs of human interaction with Ella. Each frame contained potential clues hidden in the shadows of that fateful day. Jason knew that somewhere in those silent images were the answers he was searching for. Jason stepped out into the busy streets surrounding the shopping center. He approached passers-by and shopkeepers, showing Ella's photo and asking if anyone recognized her. Their faces reflected a mix of curiosity and concern, but no one could offer any substantial information about the girl who had suddenly become the center of an ever-deepening mystery. In a small cafe a block from the shopping center, the owner paused when he saw Ella's photo. Yes, I saw her, he said, his voice tinged with uneasiness. She often wandered here at night, always alone. His words sent a shiver down Jason's spine, painting a picture of Ella's loneliness in the silent night. This new information weighed heavily on Jason's mind, Ella wandering alone at night. It was no longer just a case of a lost child. The risks were greater, the danger more real. He felt a surge of protective instinct, along with a growing anxiety about what Ella might have faced in those quiet, dark hours. Other traders provided mixed reports. Some remember seeing a girl who looked like Ella, playing alone at odd hours. None knew her by name, nor knew anything about her parents. Her stories were fragments, echoes of a child seen but not known, adding layers to the enigma that surrounded her. As Jason continued his investigations, he realized that Ella was a familiar face to many. People recognized her, but she remained a stranger to them, an unknown child among them. The recognition was devoid of any personal connection, a stark reminder of how little was known about Ella's life and past. Back at the police station, Ella's behavior began to subtly change. In the presence of Jason and Michelle, her initial apprehension slowly gave way to cautious comfort. With each kind conversation and each small act of kindness shown to her, Ella's confidence began to emerge, blossoming in the safety and warmth of the police station environment. During a moment of calm at the station, Ella's voice broke the silence. There was a big house with blue doors, she said softly, her eyes looking into the distance. She tried to remember more, her eyebrows furrowed in concentration, struggling to piece together the fragmented memories. This small but vivid detail opened a new avenue in Jason's search a tangible clue in the midst of uncertainty. As Ella felt more comfortable at the station, she began sharing more about her personal tastes. His face lit up with joy as he talked about his favorite toys, a tattered teddy bear, and a set of bright, colorful blocks. These glimpses into her likes and dislikes made her personality clearer and sharper, painting a fuller, more vivid picture of the child she was. As the days went by, Jason found himself increasingly invested in Ella's well-being, watching her gradual transformation from a scared, lonely child to a more open, confident girl. He felt a deep sense of responsibility and connection. It was an unspoken bond that grew stronger with each passing day, 
forcing him to do everything in his power to help her. Each fragment of memory Ella shared was like a small, precious piece of a larger puzzle. Jason and Michelle worked patiently, piecing together the fragments of Ella's past. It was a slow and painstaking process, but with each new piece added, they were gradually coming closer to understanding the complex and mysterious circumstances that had brought Ella into their lives. Fueled by Ella's words, Jason embarked on a quest to locate the house with the blue doors. He went over the abandoned corners of the city with a fine-toothed comb, his eyes searching for that characteristic hue. The task seemed like searching for a needle in a haystack, but the idea of uncovering Ella's past spurred him on, leading him through the winding forgotten streets. In an abandoned part of the city, Jason's perseverance paid off. There it was, the house with the blue doors, just as Ella had described it. But it wasn't the warm, welcoming place he expected to find. The house was abandoned, the windows boarded up, the garden overgrown with weeds. A palpable feeling of abandonment hung over her as if the house itself were a forgotten memory. The silence between the walls of the empty house was profound. When Jason entered, he could almost hear the faint echoes of a life once lived. Each room told a story of neglect, with peeling paint and dusty surfaces speaking of the life that once filled these spaces, now so silent and desolate. Walking through the rooms, Jason was struck by the haunting emptiness that permeated the house. The absence of laughter, warmth, and life was palpable. Each empty room seemed to hold a breath, a pause in an abruptly interrupted story. The stillness weighed heavily on him, filling him with a deep sense of loss and melancholy. This desolate house with its blue doors now faded and chipped left Jason with more questions than answers. What had happened here? Why had this place, once presumably filled with the laughter and love of a family, been reduced to such a state of abandonment? The discovery of this house only deepened the mystery surrounding Ella's past. In a dusty corner of the abandoned house, Jason came across a box of old photographs. They depicted Ella, easily recognizable even when she was a younger child, standing next to two adults he assumed were her parents. Their smiles, frozen in time, contrasted sharply with the current desolation. These photographs were poignant reminders of happier times, now seemingly lost forever. As Jason explored further, he noticed signs of a hasty departure, a half-empty cup of coffee, clothes scattered in disarray, and a child's toy abandoned in the middle of playing. It was as if the family had left in a hurry, leaving behind an image of their interrupted life. This sudden departure indicated a story of urgency and perhaps desperation. Each room in the house told a different story of Ella's life before she was found in the parking lot. The walls, now peeling and faded, must once have echoed with laughter and life. Dust-covered toys and small clothes were scattered throughout the rooms, each object a silent testimony to the child who once lived, played, and called it home there. The dilapidated state of the house mirrored the turmoil that must have affected Ella's family. The broken furniture, cracked frames, and general state of disrepair indicated decline and anguish. It was a tangible representation of the dreams and struggles of a broken family. An environment that Ella had left, her past shrew did in the shadows of these walls. Jason carefully searched the remains of the abandoned house, each object potentially a clue to understanding Ella's past. Old bills, scattered personal effects and scribbled notes, each piece hinted at the life that once thrived in this now silent space. In the silence of the abandoned rooms, Jason felt closer to unraveling the mystery of Ella's story. Jason decided to approach the neighbors, hoping to get more information about Ella's family. Hesitant at first, they ended up sharing some fragments of information. The family, they recalled, was often seen in difficulties, both financially and in their interactions. Their stories gave the image of a family faced with problems that seemed to go far beyond the normal challenges of everyday life. The more Jason listened to the neighbors, the more the picture of Ella's family situation began to take shape. Whispers of financial problems and deepening isolation were common threads in her narratives. Some neighbors even speculated that the family had left the city, perhaps to escape the growing pressures that had become too difficult to bear. As the day went on, Jason sat in his office, 
reflecting on everything he had learned, he made a silent vow to himself to do whatever it took to ensure Ella's safety and happiness. It was no longer just an affair for him. It was a personal mission, a promise made to a child who had already faced too much for his young age. Jason felt a whirlwind of emotions at the thought of Ella. There was a deep feeling of connection and responsibility that he couldn't shake. His role as a police officer had brought him many cases, but none had touched him like this one. Ella's vulnerability and resilience had etched themselves deeply into her heart, fueling her determination to help her. Rumors of his parents' sudden departure have left Jason with more questions than answers. What had led them to take such drastic action? Was there more to their story than the financial and social difficulties their neighbors talked about? These shadows from the past loomed large, making the mystery of Ella's situation even more complex and painful. In the midst of his exploration, Jason came across an unexpected discovery. A hidden room, hidden behind a movable bookcase, this secret space seemed untouched by time. A stark contrast to the rest of the house. As he entered, he felt a sense of intrigue and uneasiness, sensing that this room might contain important information about Ella's family history. Inside the hidden room, Jason found a treasure trove of old letters. They were written with a sense of urgency and fear. The most striking were those that indicated Ella's mother's growing concern for her daughter's safety. These letters, filled with a mother's love and fear, offered a glimpse of the turmoil that must have taken over their lives. Despite the revelations, the whereabouts of Ella's parents remained shrouded in mystery. The letters did not give clear answers. They only deepened the enigma. Jason felt a mix of frustration and determination as he realized that finding out what happened to Ella's parents was crucial to understanding her story and ensuring her safety and well-being in the future. The letters portrayed an anxiety-ridden mother desperately trying to protect her son from unseen dangers. Her words were tinged with palpable fear, indicating a situation that was spiraling out of control. These heartfelt letters reveal a mother's fierce instinct to protect her child, even in the face of her own unspoken fears. Among the letters, Jason also found a collection of old, dusty documents. These papers revealed the family's history of financial difficulties and social challenges. They told the story of a family trying to stay together against all odds, providing valuable context for the family's situation and adding layers to the complex puzzle of Ella's past. Jason's next step took him to the dusty old mailbox outside the abandoned house. He methodically went through each piece of mail, noting the senders. Between the usual bills and junk mail, he searched for any correspondence that could offer more information about the family's sudden disappearance and Ella's current situation. Among the miscellaneous mail, Jason discovered several letters from a local women's shelter. This discovery sparked his interest. It was a tangible link to a support network for women and children in need. The shelter's involvement suggested that Ella's mother had sought help, which indicated deeper problems in the family that had remained hidden until then. The letters from the shelter were revealing. They were a mix of formal correspondence and personal requests for help. It became clear that Ella's mother had been in contact with the shelter, desperately seeking help and advice. He wrote that he was sick and that he could no longer take care of Ella alone. The tone of these letters conveyed a sense of urgency and fear, a mother's plea for help to protect her daughter. Determined to find out more details, Jason decided to visit the women's shelter in person. He hoped shelter staff could give the letters more context and shed light on the family's struggles. It was a crucial clue, and he felt a mixture of expectation and apprehension about what he might discover. As he headed toward the shelter, Jason was filled with a combination of hope and apprehension. He hoped the shelter could offer more clues about Ella's mother's circumstances and perhaps even provide information about her current whereabouts. The uncertainty of what he might find remained in his mind, but he remained steadfast in his search for answers. Upon arriving at the shelter, Jason prepared for difficult conversations. Staff, sympathetic to her cause, shared the sad truth about Ella's mother. She had sought refuge in the shelter, devastated by the circumstances in which she found herself. Their revelation painted a picture of a woman fighting against insurmountable odds, trying to find a safe haven for herself and her daughter.
The most heartbreaking revelation came when Jason learned the fate of Ella's mother. Shelter staff informed him that she had passed away due to a serious illness. This news hit Jason hard as he realized the depth of despair Ella's mother must have faced, fighting a battle she ultimately couldn't win, leaving Ella alone in the world. Team members recounted the painful decision Ella's mother had made. With her health deteriorating and her options running out, she left Ella in the shopping center parking lot, hoping someone would find her and give her a better future. It was a desperate last resort decision from a mother who saw no other way to ensure her daughter's safety. During his visit, Jason also asked about Ella's father. The shelter team had little information, but what they knew was not promising. They thought he had been involved in illegal activities and had disappeared. This revelation added another layer of complexity to the case, clarifying why Ella's mother felt so desperately alone in her struggles. The harsh reality of Ella's abandonment became painfully clear to Jason, left alone in the world, first by the tragic death of her mother and then by the absence of her father, Ella's journey has been one of profound loneliness and vulnerability. The weight of this realization weighed on Jason, reinforcing his commitment to ensuring a better and safer future for Ella. After much reflection, Jason made a sincere decision. Moved by Ella's story and the bond they had created, he decided to become her adoptive father. It was a decision motivated not only by duty, but by a deep sense of affection and connection. Jason knew this was more than a professional commitment. It was a personal commitment to give Ella the loving home she deserved. Jason embarked on the journey through the complexities of the foster care system. It was a maze of paperwork, legal requirements, and meetings. Despite the challenges, he remained determined. Every form he filled out, every meeting he attended, brought him one step closer to the possibility of officially giving Ella the stability and love of a family that had been so tragically denied to her. In a twist of fate, a chance encounter led Jason to discover Ella's maternal grandparents. They had been looking for Ella since her mother disappeared. This discovery opened the door to a part of Ella's family she had never known, a connection to her mother and her heritage that had been absent from her life. The meeting between Ella and her grandparents was an emotional turning point. For Ella, it was the discovery of a family she didn't know she had. For his grandparents, it was the end of a painful and uncertain search. Tears were shed, stories were shared, and a new family bond began to form, filling a void in Ella's life with newfound love and connection. The story culminates with Jason, now Ella's godfather, reflecting on his journey. He thought about the profound impact Ella had on her life, transforming him in ways he had never anticipated. His journey with Ella was one of compassion, challenge, and ultimately, love. It was a testament to the unexpected paths life can take and the transformative power of caring for others.